A national minimum wage is an aberration of nature. Rubbish. Market forces. And market forces alone should determine wage levels. Mark my words, this sort of economic feather bedding will result in higher inflation and do more harm than good to the low-waged and unwaged of our country. Order! Order! Yes. The Honourable Member for Govan South, Mr Tommy Pat the Doug Huggett. With respect, the Honourable Gentleman is talking shite. Sorry, Hen. He thinks the unwaged are feather bedded. Let him try living on Social Security benefit. See how he likes it! Order! 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 Very well. Madam Speaker, I accept the Honourable Gentleman's challenge. And in return, I challenge him to find a suitable candidate to exchange lifestyles with me for one full calendar month. Dear Ella, I am rooked. As I write, the phone has been cut off, the gas has been cut off, thankfully, the electric... <laughs> I am up to high jewel with worry. Please, can you lend me some Josh? Hurry up, I'm bloody well, for God's sake! Quiet! Yes. <laughs> About bloody time! Hey, Santa, can I have a chain set and a rocking horse, please? <laughs> And there was me arguing for an inflatable woman to. But you've already got one, haven't you? If I was say I keep a civil tongue in your heat centre, you're in a fairly vulnerable position. Ah, you don't have a. Ah, you are. Oh, you're swine, you are. Rob, quick! The door's coming in! Hit the sleigh! Oh. <laughs> Hello. Are you here for the scripture class? <laughs> Of course, we'll need to make sure that big laddie dad Tory bastard doesn't get off lightly. We've the image of Govan to consider. That's why our choice of candidate is paramount. We need to find a scumball who's media friendly. Honest, hard working. Who embodies the noble virtues of the glorious working class. Correct. Nah. Let's just find some nutter to shite in his Chesterfields. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> What do you think? Think he'd do it? Do it? Look at him. For ten pence and a toffee apple, he'd eat his own young. <laughs> My sole aim is to prove that state benefits are adequate to provide for health, welfare and a nutritious diet. And here was me thinking it was just a cheap publicity stunt as well. Oh, shame on you, Nori. Yes, I remember I once cherished certain political dreams myself. Three in a bed romps with Edwina Curry and her daughter. A very dream. Edwina Curry's got a face like a horse. I know. But there's something about a bird with a feed bag on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, well thought should be looking in here soon. His agent said he'd be doing a meet the people tour about now. I was wondering what our attitude should be if he tries to pally up with us. Well, I think we should be fair-minded about it. If he buys us drink, we'll lick his ass. If he doesn't, we'll shag and eat him. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Good afternoon, everyone. Tony Wellthorpe. <laughs> Can I buy you all a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Nice, eh? Welcoming. All well, they need is a moat, a drawbridge, and a vat of boiling oil. <laughs> I feel like the bloody exorcist on in here. Oh, what am I talking about? That's a nice middle class family, isn't it? I mean, they're not going to judge people by appearances, are they? Remember, children, if we like the look of him, he can stay in the house. If not, there's a bed made up in the stables. <laughs> I 
hope you'll be comfortable here, Mr. Nesbitt. Oh, don't you worry about me. You just take me out for a canter around about six. <laughs> then I use the neck doing the blacksmiths about ten o'clock to get rehoofed, you know. Rehoofed? It's a wee joke. I'm, I'm making light of a potentially awkward situation. It's called social etiquette, you know. I see. Sorry. I don't know why the hell I bothered. I should have just had shit in the living room carpet when I arrived and put them at their ease, you know. Don't you like muesli, Mr Nesbitt? No, no, you're all right. Once you get used to the idea, you put it in your mouth and you don't re-grout the kitchen with it. You can have black into the concept, you know. <laughs> I'm being unpleasantly sarcastic and Glasgow that passes for humour. Oh, I see. Sorry. <clears throat> well, oh, I really ought to get going. I'm taking my husband's surgery this morning in his absence. I must admit I'm pretty nervous about it. Well, I often ask my wife to nick doing the boogies when I'm no there, but remove somebody's appendix? It is political surgery. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was uh, ignorance as opposed to humour on my part. You'll get to know the subtle difference. <laughs> All right, Tiger. <laughs> what the hell is that running? That's Chloe's violin. Dear God. I actually had a bus pipe and a single end in Burn Dyke Street that sounded a bit like that. But you know we better get yourself a plumber as opposed to a violin teacher. They're bloody sight cheaper. And you'd end up with a sweeter sound, eh, Chloe? I'm sorry, the children are a little nervous with strangers. Well, if it's any consolation, they've a queer effect on me, too. Well, that's a pity. I was hoping I could trust you to look after them. It's Mrs. Morris's day off. I see. So that has to be my role at the cutting edge of government, eh? The politician's wife. <laughs> In a way. If so, I hope you find the sex better than I do. Eh, uh, humour, right? Am I laughing? See you later. Well, are we just going to sit here gawping at each other? Are we going to indulge in the miracle of speech, eh? Tell you what, you want a sweetie? Eh? Hey, Please, see her. I've got some lucky bag. Wait. Make a boy and make a girl. What do you say? Eh? Hey? <laughs> All right. You've convinced me. You're the Chucky twins. Oh, that's your fag. <laughs> Do you far know you smoke? Are you kidding? He hardly even knows our names. Can I ask you a question, please? Sure. Are you proper scum, or are you just working class? Toby! No, 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 you're all right, you're all right. No, I am, in actual fact, authentic scum. You can tell that by my aftershave, impetigo by Chanel. <laughs> Why do you ask? Is it just because you're a stuck-up wee middle-class bastard? No, he's the reverse. He won't speak to anyone who's not working class. It's his oasis complex. That's not true. I admire Nick Leeson. He embezzled six million pounds. Nick Leeson? In the name of God, what happened to your innocence? When I was your age, I used to admire simple souls like cowboys, you know. People that went about wiping out Indians and hanging people for... <laughs> and second thoughts, just stick with Nick Leeson. Why shatter that youthful idealism, you know? It's a different world altogether, isn't it? This middle class carry on, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you may not see this. Look, look. A fruit bowl, right? A fruit bowl containing, wait for it, fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm not trying to play the tiny Tim card here in the night, but seeing Scum World, 
I mean, a football is for containing everything else but. See, when, see, when I was young, I used to think Kirby grips and gas bills was fruit. That's not all, my friends. Step this way. Wait to see this. Wait to see this. Look, cakes. Hundreds of them. I mean, see in Scumland, cakes were lucky to make it to the, to the table for less a cupboard. I mean, your mother come in with a full bag of shopping and by the time she was hijacked in the lobby by the children, well, she was lucky if she made it to the table clutching the handbag hondle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, God, you can't help thinking how things might have been different if we all had, had access to the great middle-class wonders of cake and fruit. <laughs> all right, Toby, son. That's right, son. You stick into your homework. Because I'll tell you, education is the passport to a better life. Oh, what's your man? You need a wee hand. Thanks. What's the coefficient of linear expansion? What were the main gains and losses of the Peninsular Wars? The principal export of Malaysia. I tell you, she all this book learning. Oh, it's, a, it's a load of crap, son. It's a load of crap because it never made a blind bit of difference to me in my life. And there you are. I could have sworn I had a dick before I come down here. Eh? <laughs> uh-huh. A wounded fawn in the abattoir of life. This will be me at my level. Come in. <laughs> What's that you're giving us now, eh? Is that Concerto in E by Dinerod? Listen, I know I'm not very good, but with patience and practice I'll improve. And if you must make comments on my playing, I'd rather they were encouraging ones. Oh, hey. Sorry, it's just a scum thing, you know. Find somebody doing something different. Well, you grind their confidence into the dirt in order to... Encourage them? Oh, don't be so touchy. <laughs> Never did me any harm, did it? <laughs> All right, well, yeah, fair enough, that's a bit of a bad example. But, uh, I mean, I've got kids of my own, and I mean, I've never done encouraging them. Where are they now? At university? Yeah, well, no, they're no, actually... You know, one of them's in the jail and the other one's on planet hash. <laughs> I've nothing to reproach myself about, you know, because I have given them every chance in life. Every chance. <laughs> I sleep very easy in my bed at night. Don't you worry about me. Oh, yes, very easy. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Gosh, it's that, son. I, I can't sleep. Yeah, that's heartbreaking. What do you want? Listen, son, eh, can I ask you something? Have I encouraged you in life? Well, you're not turning sentimental, are you? Either you're pushed or... I'm trying to be supportive, you cheeky wee bastard that you are. <laughs> what exactly is it you're doing for a living these days, son? Ah, I, I peddle soft drugs. Oh, I see. Well, you stick in, and maybe one day you'll be peddling hard drugs. <laughs> Put your mother on, I want to speak to her. Oh, Ma, it's da. Oh, tell my canny company the phone the new. Tell him Tony's raising my consciousness. <laughs> hey, da. Ma says uh, she can't company the phone. That patronising wank's raising her consciousness. <laughs> I'll ask her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ma. What? Da says does raising your consciousness involve lowering your knickers. <laughs> Honestly, Tony, children, eh? Sometimes they just need a right good bow for the chip pan, don't they? <laughs> anyway, you were saying about the imperative of elitism. Oh, sod elitism. Just tell us who fed you was dipping up the hunt ball. Come on. Oh, well, I... no, ladies, I shouldn't. Uh -uh. But since you are. Oh. <laughs> no offence, Star. I'd love to stone here talking shit to you, but some of us have got a work ethic. Get it up. I can't live without me, eh? <sighs> All 
great door. Uh, what do you want? Well, a tea register Volvo and 50k a year when they go amiss, but uh, in the absence of that, I wouldn't mind a wee glass of your Vimto. <laughs> it's not Vimto, it's red wine. Ach, I suppose that'll do a push, you know. Help yourself. Oh. What's that you're reading? Fiscal policy for the years 1991 to 97. That's a cracker, that. I read that in the beach at Largs. I'll no spoil the ending. Mr Nesbitt, did you want something? Well, I would have thought that was kind of fairly obvious. I mean, short of me bringing you your slippers and offering you a paw. Just kind of looking for a wee bit of company, no? I'm sorry, I'm up to my eyes and very nearly out of my depth. Well, maybe I could help you. All right. Let's see, shall we? What do you know about um, the proposed new ring road encompassing planning agreements and selective tendering? Well, you're a bit rusty on that. Comparative pensions? Oh, well, I just... oh, work permits? Maybe I'll just slip my stable, do you know? The Social Security Act, 1974. Is that... Pre-revision are established. Pre-revision, I think. Paragraph and subsection. But two and e. Two and e. Oh, invalidity benefits and entitlements. <laughs> that old chestnut. It's quite simple, actually. In a case of your long-term claimant, uh, you may never sit down. I'd have been my guest. Oh, yeah. Let the dog see the rabbits, that style, you know. <laughs> Uh, what seems to be the trouble? Yes, I'm sure communities like Govan have many virtues, but frankly, thrift and self-discipline are not among them. So that's why you want to introduce gas ovens for the long-term unemployed? You are misquoting me. I don't think I said gas ovens. No, I did not say gas ovens. Be fear, Mary, he said agas. Whose side are you on? His! Tell us more about the Luftwaffe, Tony. I just love the full-length leather clothes, didn't you? Now, you see, Hitler was misunderstood. So are you, sweetheart. I can see it in your eyes. You're a very perceptive woman, Mrs Cotter. Yes, I do flatter myself that I've been allowed insight into the hidden sanctums of the human heart. <laughs> it's the upside of being married to a dog turd. <laughs> I've had enough of this. Mary, wait. Look, what are you doing? Look. I'll get straight to the point. Do you want a ride or don't you? Oh, with you? My God, what a horrible thought. Mary! <laughs> Mary, don't be so headstrong! Why, will you have me shot and mounted? Is that what you did to your wife? My wife isn't in your league. Oh, she's well-bred, yes, but she's timid, reserved. You're feisty, outspoken. You're a... Better off? Well, I was going to say force of nature. Well, before we go dancing around the gypsy campfire, let's get one thing straight. I don't like you, I don't like who you are, and I don't like what you stand for. Mary. Oh, and if you want to see a force of nature, then you just put your hand in my arse like that when my man's around. This is strictly business. Oh, sod you then. Let's go home. Taxi! Taxi nothing. You are on a strict budget. Where's your middle-class thrift? Your self-discipline? You'll walk, fella, and like it. I've never been spoken to like that in my life. Well, and I don't suppose you like it either. On the contrary, I've got a stiffy. <laughs> Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Look, it's his last night here. I want to do something special. I want to go to that premiere. And if I don't go with Rab, who should I go with? Your husband. Oh, father. Carl is old-fashioned. Now look. Yes, look. Well, that's just to go the pictures, eh? Well, not quite the pictures. It's a digitally remastered relaunch of a neorealist classic. Rab, you look... I know, like a bouncer at a bonkers disco. Oh. Oh. Shall we? Well, maybe later, but do you know I think we should go to the pictures first? <laughs> Quick, go. Not much 
in a fun bag. What is it? Half bottle of Roddy. It's just a government premier to usually flush the guys for waiting before they begin, you know. All right, Chief. <laughs> I don't find well we're not going to get fresh to cheek. Well, posh birds like a bit of danger, don't they? Oh, there you go, Annie. Tell you what, this Disney half bring back some memories. Memories? Have you been to a premiere before? No, but I've been in many a line up Naughty Street, Nick. Just letting you know, but I need to phone my solicitor. Quiet, here comes a charity patron. Jenny, my dear, how are the family? Very well, thank you, Rafe. Uh, can I introduce... Lard. Lord Lard of Gyro Valley. <laughs> do I know your people? Depends. Do you do prison visits? <laughs> This is your last night. Aye. If you don't get mugged or buggered gazing at the stars, there'll be cause for rejoicing, eh? Do you know London well? I actually uh, ran away here when I was 16. I used to eat chips out of litter bins and slept in the lavies at Paddington Station. It's the nearest thing I've ever had to a romantic interlude. Mm -hmm. And now you're back. Ah, uh, uh, I meant to say, uh, let your get up. Thanks. The dress is Donna Karen, the shoes are Patrick Cox. <laughs> nice to let me lend you their cast offs, eh? <laughs> Never mind, I'm wearing your man's suit. <laughs> they're, they're designer labels. I know that. Just. I suppose trying to hide my embarrassment at being... Happy? When you go as far as that. <laughs> Try. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I should. I mean, I'm on the verge of making an arse of myself here. I mean, after all, you're... Uh, you're another man's wife. I'm another woman's husband. Let's forget about labels. In my experience, Happiness isn't an ongoing situation. It's it's just a jumble of odd moments scattered down the years. So, uh, are we having a moment here? That's up to you. Imagine me snogging a posh bird, eh? <laughs> See if my balls were as lucky as this in the midweek lottery. My life would be complete. She when you get raped, didn't you? A shag is just a shag. But a moment, a moment, you always have. What are you two doing in here? Guess. Didn't trust me, eh? He's a nice enough man, but in the end, he isn't one of us, is he? No. 
How could you? For my own wife to behave so irresponsibly and with that piece of vermin. Do you realise how much this has harmed me? I'm having to call in favours to exercise some damage limitation. Just you wait till I get home. I'll... Don't worry about it, Tony. Times like these, we need to put party differences aside. Is there anything you can do? He's scum, isn't he? Maybe screwing the social black and gas mirrors. I'll ask around. We're bound to get him on something. My villa on the Algarve's particularly welcoming this time of year. Noblesse oblige. It's the British way, Tony. You ready? Oh, it's getting more and more stressful being an executive nowadays, isn't it? I need to be relieved three or four times a day now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, welcome, Hilda. Business as usual, eh? Shut it, you. This is the nearest thing I've had to a touch up since I left. Why don't you go me? What is it this time? Fraud or stolen property? Non-payment of fines. God alone knows how they fun it. Aye, I could hazard a fair guess. Frankly, since I've been here, I've seen absolutely... Big laddie da bastard. They get away with it every time. No, every time. My non wee ho finds the skag. The one you lost? Aye. Want me to tell you where I lost it? Only a month ago. <laughs> Can you keep a picture of your dog, please? Thank you very... Get off. Thank you very much. I expressed in the house only a month. What are you doing? Get your... Do you know who I am? Don't worry. I think I get the picture. <laughs> oh, you yeah. Hey, Tony. He deals with feather beddings. Let's see how you make it with a plate of porridge and an arsehole at the Channel Tunnel, eh? Go on, you dirty I very think you are. <laughs> Let that MP be a lesson to you. It doesn't matter who you are in life. If you do wrong, God, I'll make you suffer. God? I mean, don't do talk. Did, did. Don't spoil it for her. Come on. Let's go home and we can uh, watch Crime Watch. At this rate, we'll be on it. Eh, yeah, well, we can dream, can't we? Come on. <laughs> <laughs>